Ashley Watkins, I hope to pass the sober tonight too. I want to know what it is y'all hoes trying to say. In River Rainwater, I can't stand the late queen. It's 802, ho. I was marching in, okay? <laughs> Ooh, y'all some complaining ass hoes. Y'all complain about every goddamn thing. For some shit that somebody get up and voluntarily do out of their life every... Let me tell y'all something, and don't get me wrong. I do get paid for doing this. But i much rather sit on my ass at 8 o'clock and be watching TV the same way y'all ass be sitting up watching me. Lay off just a little bit with the fucking complaining. Oh, he get up to get something to drink too much. Oh, he eat too much. Oh, it ain't no pictures behind the thing. Oh, this rant went on too long. I'm here to tell you something, man. and I'm in a bad mood today, so I'm just going to be honest with you. Go somewhere else. If you one of those people that I annoy you, I work your nerve, this and that is annoying. Please just go somewhere else because I'm not changing. All right. That's the beautiful thing about me doing my YouTube channel the way I do it is the fact that I don't work in corporate America and I don't have to be pulled up and I don't have to do things a certain way. I do it what makes me comfortable. How the fuck y'all think I've maintained doing this shit for 13 years? dealing with the public it's not easy dealing with you complaining bitches and i'm just being real here and i hate to start to show off on a negative tone it's not easy dealing with you complaining bitches y'all have a fucking complaint for everything and on the surface y'all think this job is easy and there are parts of the job that is easy but I can guarantee you nine-tenths of y'all could not endure the public scrutiny that people like me and others have to deal with on a daily basis from bitches like y'all. 90% of y'all, if y'all had to read about yourself, the things that y'all say about me on a daily basis you would have been and jumped off a damn bridge. Cut a bitch some slack. I'm home, okay? The computer had to boot up, bitch. I wanted to go in there and get me some sweet tea. God damn. One bitch put in a thing the other day. Q, you know, I just can't stand when you get up. It's so annoying. And just be talking out the side of your ass because what's the difference between me getting up or going on five two-minute commercial breaks when I was on TGIF? It was the same difference. It was an interruption in the broadcast. But some of y'all lives just so miserable. You just want to find something to complain about. My whole brand was built on informalities that it feels like you at home just kicking it with your home girl. I'm not at Sister Circle. I'm not at Sherry Shepherd, bitch. We chilling. We chilling. Damn. Always fucking complaining. And I'm going to tell you one other thing. For you to sit up and watch me and complain, that is a mental illness. If you don't like it here, please leave. Please leave. I promise you my feelings won't hurt and my bank account will not skip a beat. Please leave. If I hate black women and you watch, please leave. Nobody's making you stay here. Nobody. 
And to continue to watch and complain, you one miserable bitch. Damn. Now I don't even want to do the shit. I'm finna log off. Fuck this shit. Y'all can have it. I'll talk to y'all later. <laughs> I ain't gonna do y'all like that. Anyway, y'all. Um, today was a very slow news day, y'all. So I really ain't gonna hold you. First things first. Next stop. On the Down to the Bar tour is Huntsville. Y'all go to my Instagram and check it out. I need y'all to save the date. May 26th. May 26th. We gonna be in Huntsville. I called Miss Wanda messy ass. Miss Wanda is going to help co-host the party with me. May 26th, save the date. We going to be in Huntsville, Alabama. The ticket's not on sale yet. Me and Marceau still trying to work out the money because I don't need to be falling out with him like he did with uh, Martell them. We got to make sure the money right. Me and Marceau still trying to work out the money. But May 26th, we will be in Huntsville, Alabama, slapping five, drinking, carrying on, doing the Dutchie wine with Miss Wanda and having a good old fashioned down home Southern ass time down in Huntsville, baby. I might even call, and I ain't calling Miss Netta ugly ass. She ain't finna come ugly up my event. They want to know if Marceau other woman going to be there. I don't know. But Kiki ass better not be there because if Kiki show up, I'm going to fight her. Okay? Y'all know I fight women's kids and old people. And if Kiki ass show up, I'm fighting Kiki. Okay? I'm fighting Kiki ass down to the ground because I don't like her. Martel could pull up too since he always talking. Now I'm going to have security with me. That big bitch ain't finna beat me up to the parking lot. Okay. That's all right. Marcel will help me fight if Martel. No. Uh, what's the big man name? That, that go with the girl. Uh, the other big guy that go with Tiffany, her husband, Lou. Big Lou will help me fight if Martell try to fight me. They say Martell got enough. What if Coleslaw and her mama show up and try to confront me to the parking lot? Ooh. We, I'm going to turn Huntsville all types of out. But we going to have Real fun down in Huntsville. We going to have an amazing time. I'll let y'all know when the ticket portal opens. But May 26th, we're going to be down there in Huntsville. I want y'all to know I'm listening to y'all with the dates. I'm listening to y'all with the emails. As I'm talking to the people who own the venues and we start talking the numbers, that's when we rolling the dates out. Um, so that's that on that. Y'all, I watched something last night that changed my life as it relates to abortion. Uh, I'm in here watching The Blacklist on uh, Netflix. 
And last night there was an episode where the show opens up. These men wake up. They some type of operation has been done to their bodies, and then they're told they have to take these pills every day. Get to the middle of the episode. Come to find out this doctor who was on a mission, she found a way to implant, I guess, uteruses inside of these men and make them carry babies. And the men that she targeted were lawmakers who were against abortion and preachers and pastors who taught against abortion. And what was so funny about it was the white male lawmaker was in the hospital and the doctor told him, I mean, everything looks fine. And the lawmaker was like, get this thing out of me. And she was like, unfortunately, a heartbeat has been detected. And based on the law that you passed, I could lose my license and go to jail if I terminate this pregnancy. And I thought this was such a genius way I thought this was such a genius way to tackle in fiction the idea of abortion. The pastor happened to be a black guy, and uh, he held true. The reporters was like, you know, well, what happened? And he said, she tried to test my faith, but I didn't give up. And then he tells the nanny to bring the baby in, and he had the baby or whatever. Uh, it was a great, 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 great episode. Um, I'll go back in there and watch it. Uh, I'll let y'all know tomorrow which episode it was, but it was Blacklist with Kevin Spacey. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. But speaking of, that brings us to our next topic, which is what's going on over there in Arizona. So, they don't did an abortion ban over there in Arizona, and shit's going crazy, y'all. I never thought in a billion years that I would see America regress to a place of dictatorship, right? And here's why we got to be careful. Not Kevin Spacey, James Spader. I'm sorry, y'all. James Spader is on Blacklist, not Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey somewhere playing in little boy's booty. That the wrong person, James Spader. <laughs> um, here is why, and I want to talk to black people in particular. Here is why we have to be very careful when they start taking away people's rights and we try to start acting like, oh, it ain't me. When they was fucking with the gays and because of how some of y'all feel about the gays, y'all didn't give a damn. You thought, you almost thought it was right based on your religious beliefs. It don't matter. They should have it anyway. It's nasty. God don't approve anyway. All right. They don't jump off the gays. Now, they went to the blacks. They repealing everything for black people. All right. White fish wanted to stay silent. Black fish, some of y'all stay silent. Now, they don't got off of that, and they don't went over here to pregnancy. Do y'all see what's happening here? When the rights of one group is threatened, the rights of all groups are threatened. And it might not be you today, but it'll be your ass tomorrow. So while y'all was around here happy and busy, that they was banning drag queens and banning this and banning that because it didn't fit your beliefs, you didn't care. 
but your dumb, naive asses couldn't see the forest for the trees. See, now they on y'all. Now look, my uterus made out of clay. I could simply sit back on this abortion issue and really be like, I don't give a fuck. I ain't got no reason to go to Planned Parenthood. And anybody I hunch, they ain't getting pregnant. I'm a gay man. Abortion don't affect me one way or another. I don't need one. I ain't going to never need one. I don't get skeeted in no way. But if I did, I could easily sit back on this issue and be like, not my problem. I don't need an abortion. And all the girl, all the women around me is 40 plus done had their kids and halfway through hysterectomies. Abortion is not an issue that affects me whatsoever. It may indirectly affect me through friends and family, but I can still kick my hands up and say, so what? But I have sense enough to know that it's abortion today and it's the right for me to sit at the front of the bus tomorrow or the right for me to live in a certain neighborhood on Wednesday. So that's why y'all got to be careful. Y'all got to be real careful when you jump on issues because some of y'all was so happy with a lot of this LGBT anti-laws and stuff they were passing. Y'all were so happy because it coincides with your religious beliefs and so on and so forth. Now look at you. Now look at you. Got a pudge in your stomach and your ass might go to prison because you can't go nowhere and get abortion. Ban the drag queens. Ban the drag queens. Oh, yeah. Ban the abortions. Ban the abortions. You see how easy that work? You see how that work? For the white folks out there, ban, ban diversity and inclusion. Ban diversity. I'm here to tell you something. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. You white whores in college, you white sorority whores in college, y'all were the main ones getting abortions. Y'all stayed down there to the abortion clinic. You white whores in college, I see you. I, I see you. You white whores in college are the same ones who sit up and lay up with y'all men and let them push all this DEI stuff and anti-affirmative uh, uh, action rhetoric. And they the same white men that y'all land with taking y'all reproductive rights. It's the blacks today. It's you white whores who need them abortions tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We got to be smarter than that. We got to think outside ourselves. Yes, I might not believe in certain things, but it doesn't believe, and it doesn't mean that I don't believe in your right to have it. I don't care if you don't believe in abortion. It's not about you believing in abortion or not. It's about the fact that if they can take away that right, imagine what right is coming up next, dumbasses. It's bigger than abortion. It's bigger than taking away diversity programs in college. There's a much bigger agenda here. Oh, I don't agree with abortion. The Lord said, the Lord said, this is bigger than what the Lord said and abortions.
Come on. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. And for those of y'all, this is not everybody, but for those of y'all who were anti-affirmative action because it didn't affect you, you were anti-LGBT stuff because it didn't affect you, but now abortion affects you and you want all of those groups that you were against to now stand behind you and help fight this thing. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? And this is not to pit the LGBTQ community against women. But for those of you women who are anti-gay, how would you feel if us sissies just sit this abortion one out? Nah, sis, go ahead and fight that one on your own. Good luck. Why you're six months pregnant? Good luck. But see, we ain't going to do y'all hoes like that. We just all need to understand. Okay, everybody wanted to know. What episode of that's the episode right there of Blacklist, y'all? That's a very good episode. I got it up on the screen of uh the episode. Thank you so much, Shantae McCormick. <coughs> That's the abortion episode. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Meese always says, we don't need y'all to help fight it. We'll be okay. Remember that. Baby, Meese, that's a very arrogant and ignorant position to take. There is power in numbers. We all need help fighting. And unfortunately, Mies, and I'm going to be very honest with you, you do need our help. And you know why? Because you're a woman. And unfortunately, we live in a patriarchal society. Yes, Women can get a lot of things done. Yes, women are very powerful, but it's still a man's world. And a man's voice will always be heard before a woman. And a man's voice will get much further than a woman's voice. And that's not me being chauvinistic. That's just me explaining the way the world, the world works. But good luck, Miss uh, Mies Always thinking that you got it. You do need help. We all need help. There's power in numbers, baby. Um, <clears throat> moving right along. Y'all, it's a very slow news day today. Um, These Texas doctors, he not only need to lose his license, he need to lose his life. This man, 
done diagnosed this woman with cancer, had this woman going through chemotherapy, come to find out the lady didn't even damn have cancer. The lady had went in there for, they found something on one of her doggone organs. Found something on one of her organs, didn't know what it was, told the lady it was cancer. Had the lady going through chemotherapy treatments and stuff, and finally at one of her treatments, somebody was like, well, we don't even understand what you're going through treatment for, and we haven't even tested the body part that was sent away to the lab. Child, the people had done tested the damn organ and wasn't a it wasn't a lick of damn cancer in it. Now the lady bald headed to the root. Just bald headed down to the root. Had on bald headed like the heel of my foot after a good pedicure. Just bald headed. When I tell you, they about to rename the whole wing of that hospital, the Quentin Antoine Latham Wing of Oncology, after I got through, done, baby, I'm suing for the physical, fuck emotional distress. That's the least of it. I'm going for the gusto first. I'm going for physical. You messed up all my body putting that chemo in me and you gave me mesothelioma. So I'm calling Morgan and Morgan for that case. Okay? Then I'm bald-headed and had to go out in public. I'm calling the Cochran firm for that. Okay? And the Health State Beauty Board. Then I got emotional distress. I'm calling in for that. Then I had lost my job. I'm calling my labor attorney for that. Then you put my family through. I don't care that Johnny Cochran did. We're going to call Teresa Caputo and have her ass conjure his ass from the dead. Because if it don't fit, it must have quit. Johnny Cochran from the handle this case. Then you put all my family through emotional distress. So it's about 30 more of them finna call Morgan and Morgan. Baby, when I tell you we finna own that goddamn hospital, everybody, we call them being crump. Because even though I was white, it's something about race. It's something about race. We call it Ben Crump. When I, we call it um, Lisa Bloom, too, because I think somebody touched me inappropriately while I was knocked out doing chemo, okay? I think somebody touched me in between my legs and in my butt. I'm calling Tamika Mallory and Sean King because we finna march outside this motherfucker. Ain't a damn ambulance getting in this entrance. And you don't have me in here. Could you imagine the... E so, could you imagine somebody telling you you about to die and all the emotions you go through just for somebody to tell you Oops. And then the people said that they had insurmountable hospital bills, that the hospital bill, excuse me, was just going through the roof. Now, nah, y'all going to have to compensate me. In every generation for the next seven generations, soon as they graduated college and or high school, they better have had a position waiting for them at that damn hospital, the Quentin Latham Hospital of Oncology.
They don't even need to hire no lawyers. They just need to give me the keys to the dough, bitch. Just give me the keys to the dough. The hospital is not mine. We finna turn this bitch into a six-story club where we can all drink and slap five, okay? Because how you do that? That's malpractice out the ass. Somebody ass gonna be paying for it. They better do it moving. And y'all better let me know when is the renaming ceremony of the Quentin Latham's wing of oncology right here diagnosing people with. You know how scary that's got to be? Don Lemon got married, y'all, but I don't know if he got married to a person or to them damn dogs, okay? It was more dogs on the stage than it was people. So I'm confused. I'm confusion. Shouts out to Don Lemon. I hope you preen up down because after yeah, I just find it convenient that white man married your ass after you got them 24 million from CNN. Don Lemon, don't you be no damn fool and let that white man run off with your discrimination money. Okay? That's discrimination money, baby. That money is the hope and the dream of the slaves. That money is not earmarked for white people. As a matter of fact, Whenever y'all go out to eat and it's time to pay, and you be like, ooh, uh-uh, you know what? This my card that's with my discrimination money account. I need you to pay for it. Not a nine dime from your discrimination money better be spent on that white man. That money is for black people and black people only. You keep that card separate. When y'all go on vacation, you will go in the gift shop and buy you something with that discrimination money. You better not buy his white ass a motherfucking thing with that discrimination money, or I guarantee you the ancestors gonna take it all away from you. They gave it, they gave that money to you for a reason. Don't you spend, don't you take no white people out for coffee, buy their ass Starbucks. That is called discrimination money. That money is only be meant to be spent on black people for black things, for black causes. Here are all the things you can buy with that money. You can buy Pump It Up. You can buy Lotta Body. You can buy Duke's Pomade for your hair. You can buy Palmer's Cocoa Butter. You can buy Wife Beaters at the Pike. You can buy Red Solo Cups. You could buy two 12 speakers to put in your trunk. You could buy a high top or a low top fade. You could buy a hot sauce shit from the corner store. You could buy a pickle egg. You could buy Kool-Aid. You can buy check sodas. Even if you're going to donate the sodas to a white cause, you could buy check sodas because the check money go to the black culture, Okay. You could buy Jordans. You could buy weed with the money, okay? But you will not be buying marigolds with our money. You will not be buying cucumber sandwiches with our money. You will not be buying those. You will not be buying um uh uh what they call them the fancy ass cookies that white people love to eat. Uh, and it ain't nothing but cookies, but they real expensive. What they call them? What they call them little things, y'all? Macaroons. You will not be buying macaroons with our discrimination money, okay? You will not be buying Taylor Swift tickets with our discrimination money, okay? No Lululemon with our discrimination money. Now, you could go buy some Nikes and some Adidas. You will not be buying Lululemon with our discrimination money, okay? That is for black causes. Black like this and not like this, done. okay? You can buy Vaseline Intensive Care with our discrimination money. You could buy a ticket to see Miss Netta and Charles with our discrimination money. 
but we is not going to see Ellen DeGeneres live or Seinfeld on stage at the Hard Rock with our discrimination money. No God. No God. No God. That's not what we're doing with our discrimination. And don't buy no more damn dogs either. Speaking of relationships, y'all don't ran Aoki Lee off from her rich man. She says she don't mess with that man no more. Aoki Lee says she don't mess with that man no more. Y'all, listen, Aoki, don't you let a bunch of internet bitches who drive Nissan Altimus and let niggas drop them off in their car at a call center job run you off from your billionaire 65-year-old man. That man about to die, girl. All you had to do was sit in there for about 10 to 15 years and it was all yours. You just you'd have been 30 something and you could have still been living your best life. You don't let hoes that ain't got two nickels to rub together run you off from your man in less than a week. And now y'all hoes happy. Y'all don't mess up that girl bag. I know Kimora somewhere mad as hell. How you going to take advice? How you going to take advice from these young hoes who nigga can't even take their ass to the salad bar? Going to let you run, run you off from yours from St. Bar. Let me tell you something. That's about she was elder abusing him. That's what you supposed to do when they that old. You're supposed to get them more coffee than they deserve and hope their heart flutter real fast. And then when they fall out on the ground, wait 10 minutes before you call 911 and then lie and say you was in the other room in the shower. Let his ass lay down there on the ground for 10 minutes before you call 911 and hope that his ass die in transit. Okay? That's, that's what you... Let me tell you something. I might put on some of my good clothes and, and take my ass down to Morton Steakhouse, see if I can find me one that got one foot in the grave. Okay? Preferably one foot in the grave and one ear at work, because all I'm going to do is talk to his ass crazy anyway. What's today, Tuesday? Why I got Wednesday up there on the thing? Let me tell y'all something. If I get me a 65-year-old white man like that that's rich, I'm going to cook so many collard greens with fat back and lard. I'm going to fry so much chicken. I'm going to put 17 types of cheese in that macaroni and cheese, three different types of milk. I'm going to put a pound of sugar in the Kool-Aid and in the Jiffy Cornbread. When I tell you I'm going to clog that bitch arteries up, he going to need to call Rota Ruta or oh, bitch, your ass dying soon. I'm going to, baby, I'm going to put so much goddamn salt on them pork chops, okay? When I tell you I'm going to get that bitch hypertension and diabetes at the same damn time, Oh, bitch, you ain't got no more than 12 months with me, bitch. I can't do this long. Your ass finna die today, bitch. Okay? In the name of good cooking. Baby, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna go in there and put my old mammy from Gone with the Wind apron on. Every night, he eating something smothered and covered. 
Okay, your ass gonna die this year. You gonna die this year, Poppy. Oh, y'all, I drank this coffee and it's running through my stomach. This the last thing we got y'all. Uh, 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 I can't even finish y'all. Um, I hate to cut y'all short. This coffee got my stomach toe up. It's 942. Thank y'all for hanging in there with me. I tried to hang in there as long as I could with y'all, but I got to get off this thing. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.